on behalf of Troy University, Troy Athletics, and the 20 conference championship winning and two-time national championship winning Troy Trojan baseball program, welcome to the Troy campus on an exciting day in Trojans athletics history. My name is Barry McKnight. Thank each and every one of you for your attendance today, either in person or remotely, and for your steadfast support of Trojan athletics and our student athletes in the past, today, and in what promises to be a very bright future across all sports. It's a special day today, a lot of pride involved in this, and to begin our program, we welcome the Athletics Director at Troy University, Mr. Brent Jones. Thank you, Barry. Uh, wow, what a great crowd. I appreciate everybody coming out on uh, short notice. Let me start. Uh, I have a lot of thank yous, so let me, let me try to get through that. Uh, as part of this. And so first, uh, to our baseball team, we have some members here. Thank you. Uh, I think I spoke to you about three weeks ago and asked you to, uh, to have faith in us during this process, and you have. Thank you to the countless amount of Troy baseball alumni that I have spoken to over the last three weeks. To hear your passion, to hear your vision of where you want us to go is really, really exciting. Thank you to Adam Godwin for the last three weeks to be able to help us in this transition period. Thank you for that. Thank you to Mark Smart, all of our previous coaches who have laid in a tremendous uh, foundation of success for Troy baseball. And thank you to our tremendous selection committee. Uh, I will tell you this, it is a lot, a lot of long, countless hours. And first, I'd like to say uh, thank you to Kyle George and Sandy Atkins. Uh, they've been by my side the entire time through this. But there's uh, six people, uh, with me being one of them, that I really need to thank. And uh, our team doctor, Obviously, uh, Dr. Dugas, who's not here today, he's actually performing surgery in Birmingham. Uh, he is our team orthopedist, highly, highly acclaimed. Uh, and to be able to have him be able to pick his brain was outstanding uh, as part of this. Brock Kelly, who's actually here today, right there. Uh, Brock Kelly, former Troy baseball player uh, and also president of a two-year college in Andalusia. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving the insight to be able to hear from you, to be able to hear your time uh, and to be able to have that. I remember, I will tell you this, in speaking with Brock, there, I called you uh, <laughs> several times and one time it was really, really late on a Sunday and you were eating and trying to put the kids down. So I know the work that went in with that and I appreciate that. Mayor Johnson, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, as a board of trustee member to be able to give your you're actually on vacation and to be able to have the, be able to speak to our candidates was simply outstanding uh, Dr. Lance Tatum uh, who actually played college baseball as well uh, who is our who's our senior associate uh, excuse me he's our senior vice chancellor I just changed your title senior vice chancellor and our provost that really helped guide this uh, as well and then one other member here that helped me that is not here is Brendan Porter uh, he is the president and CEO of the Montgomery Biscuits uh, to be able to lend his eyesight to be able to have his knowledge has really been uh, extremely helpful five of the six committee members played college baseball and so that's huge to be able to be able to sit in a room to be able to talk to them and them to understand this very very complex sport a few other things before i introduce uh chancellor hawkins to say a few words is this the process it was intense it was absolutely intense if you don't believe it you can ask my family uh, I, I think i need to reconnect with them i hadn't seen them in three weeks uh, but it was intense it was thorough extremely deliberate and very very detailed it was competitive absolutely 100 percent competitive this is the most uh, challenging and deep candidate pool that we've ever had since my four years of being here uh, and that just goes to show you the passion the foundation of troy baseball and how exciting fans are to the players back to you three weeks ago i had a zoom call with you and i told you a few things and one of those things was believe in me trust me believe in troy stay with troy okay and we will find the best candidate. And if you remember correctly, just as we had the Zoom call yesterday, I asked y'all, I wanna hear from you. What are the intangibles? What is the criteria that you would like to have for your next head coach? That guided me as well as our selection committee to be able to select the best candidate. And I appreciate you for doing that. The profile that we were looking for was a dynamic, energetic, integrity-driven leader who wants to be at Troy, 
who's a family man and is a tireless and amazing recruiter and who will fit at Troy. I think we've checked every single box there. Skylar Mead is the real deal. He has the it factor. He is going to bring energy, passion, and enthusiasm for our baseball program. I said a lot of thank yous, but there's one person I did not say thank you to. Last but not least is our Chancellor, Chancellor Jack Hawkins, Jr. Thank you, sir, for your vision, not only for Troy University, but for Troy Athletics. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are athletic directors in Division I, and I will tell you this, I have the best boss. And it's because of your support, it's not just because we're here, I have the best boss because of your support and vision for Troy University, but also Troy University Athletics, and I thank you for that. So, Chancellor Hawkins. Thank you so much, Brent, and thank you for guiding the process to a successful conclusion. I really wanted to make three, uh, maybe four points this afternoon, and the last will be to introduce uh, our new head coach. But the first point is to welcome Jesse and the two boys, Kaysen and Micah, to Troy. I, I just saw my bride of many, many years pop in, and we've called this home now for 32 years, and, and we hope. Uh, Hope you'll love it just like we have. We think it's a great community. Just uh, three years ago, we were declared among the top 50 college towns in, in the country. And uh, that speaks volumes about the town-gown relationship. So what you're about to find is a community that will embrace you and, 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 and hang on to you. And so we really, really excited about, uh, about your presence here. You know, the second thing I wanted to share with you is uh, as, I, as Dr. John Schmidt and I were driving from North Alabama just a few minutes ago, and if the highway patrol had been out, we may have been late for this, uh, Brent. Uh, it, it occurred to me that, uh, you know, this is not just about throwing a few baseballs. It sort of reminded me of the, of the story of the great, uh, of, of the, of the uh, great pyramid in Egypt. You know, that was a phenomenal construction. We don't even know who constructed the Great Pyramid. But it was one of those space age scientific developments that occurred uh, so many hundreds, thousands of years ago. But think about this, it's 480 feet tall, 750 feet along the base. It took two and a half million blocks to construct it, each one weighing an average of 5,000 pounds with no technology. Yet, in the end, it was within one degree north of, uh, of the construction. Walter McKee is an architect, and you know and I know that architects would not undertake a project like that today. But think about that. And as you think about the magnitude and the lasting effect of, of, a, of an effort like that, you, you have to realize that there were a lot of different workers, hundreds of thousands of workers engaged. Many of those workers, probably 90% of those workers were laying blocks one at a time. Probably a handful would see the 750 feet along the base and be able to see the 480 feet height. Very, very, very few would have the vision for what they were constructing, a lasting monument that would withstand the ages. You know, it brings me back to that uh, that, that quote by Henry David Thoreau who said, it's not what you're looking at, it's what you see that counts. And that's the value of vision. And that's what I think we have arrived at today in terms of vision. Vision and the best barometer for what you can do is what you have done. We all know that. And what we were looking for as we talked about the future of this program is not today, but where we're carrying this program. And we take inspiration from coastal Carolina that just a handful of years ago wound up winning the national champion championship in baseball. And with the great tradition that we have, with the support that we enjoy, and with the proper leadership and with the proper investments, then our goal is Omaha. That'll be. <laughs> so, so today is the first step of a journey, an exciting journey, but have no doubt what we, what we intended to be competitive in doing. 
It not only takes leadership, it takes great players, it takes great support, it'll take facilities. It'll take facilities. I'm delighted that the man who has been with us since the day we replaced those uh, wooden structures over at, uh, at Pace, uh, Pace Riddle uh, Pace Field, and some of you have been around long enough to remember you could go to a baseball game and walk out with splinters. You know, and so our first step was to replace that and to put something there that we could be proud of. And over time, we've done that. I think what we're about to do, and Walter McKee has been the architect of the project since day one. I'm delighted he's here. I want him to be able to unveil what, uh, what th this will appear to be. And if you haven't seen these pictures, I want you to take time afterwards to come up. But I want to thank Walter not only for his commitment to this project, but along the way recently he also committed $100,000 to help us realize the project. Walter, would you come up and share just a word or two? Hawkins, and uh, again, I, I remember that storage building on stilts sitting out there at, uh, at, at the field. and. Uh, I remember calling down here when they put the turf in. I said, well, when are they going to replay the ball game? Well, they were playing in the middle of the rain. So it's a, a lot of progress has been made. And uh, I appreciate Brent and Adams' uh, guidance. And he called me two years ago when Dr. Hawkins called me. He said, Walter, it's time to look at stadium improvements. Uh, we got a lot of things we want to do. And he gave me a list of what all we want. And so. Uh, during the two years that I've been meeting with Brent and things, the, 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 the composite plan is developed into really something that's going to be take the university in the, into the future. Uh, and we'll, if anybody wants to share that, we'll share that later. But I do, I do appreciate Adam's guidance and Brent Jones's guidance in leading us to the place that we need to be because it's going to be a fan-friendly stadium. It's going to be a great facility for the baseball team and facilities. And I know with the new coach, uh, it's, it's going to, the, the, the right ingredients is for a great, great cake. So, yeah. right, and, and uh, on a personal basis, uh, I'd like to congratulate the coach uh, on coming to Troy. Uh, I've had, my family's had some experience, and he is, as Brent said, he is a real deal. I have a young man that's uh, been influenced by him, and, uh, but he, I can tell you, you're getting the real deal. Thank you, thank you so much, Walter, for so many, uh, so many things that you, you've done for us and continue to do. You know, when you uh, talk about vision, you have to talk about the the person with the vision, and, and in my estimation, we have the vision to carry us to the highest point. Uh, but not only does he have great vision, he has the experience of being there, having pitched in the World College World Series, having coached in the College World Series. He, uh, he has all those ingredients that should carry us to the right place. Let me invite uh, Schuyler Mead to, to come up as all of us welcome him and Jesse to Troy, Alabama. Quite the room here. It's pretty impressive. Thank you, thank you so much for coming out. You know, I put notes up here, and every player I've ever coached would laugh because they know I never have notes. So, everything I, I worked on before I even left upstairs, these are the second pair of notes. So, I, I'm going to speak truly from the heart. Okay. I, first off, I couldn't be more excited to be here. My wife and I, we've had a great time. We've only been here about what 36 hours. And uh, we've been working fast and furious, and, and everybody in town has been outstanding. First off, I just want to thank everybody who was involved in the process, Chancellor Hawkins, Brent, Sandy, Kyle. There's been so many different people. Adam's been helpful to us since we got in here. 
it's just been it's been outstanding it was handled in the most professional way uh, everybody was thorough and honest so i thank all you all for that okay um, there are countless players countless players throughout every single one i've coached for 14 years i say thank you uh, I, I can't express what all those players mean to me um, i'll give you a quick story we, <laughs> I'm sitting in Starbucks with my wife's youngest sister, Emma, the other day because we're getting ready to fly out and she's helping us watch our kids back at home and my wife's in Utah and we're going we're gonna to head over here and interview and, you know, texting some players at, at South Carolina and actually on some texts with some other guys and I'm texting one of the pitchers who's probably maybe one of my favorite of all time and he's thanking me for things and I'm thanking him and next thing you know, I had to, I had to walk away and I, I started to tear up and I didn't even know what was going on and I was just overcome with emotion of not coaching that guy anymore and maybe this opportunity comes and I, I didn't even know what hit me didn't know how to react I had to just walk away and so you know I was texting with with that certain certain kid and I told him about it and he was like he said well that's pretty cool coach I said yeah I just didn't know that texting with you could cause that sort of reaction but it's for me it's going to be about those relationships i hope i hope i coach for another 14 years another 14 years after that because that's what it's all about so i thank each and every one of them i want to thank all of the coaches who i've been involved with in in my career okay from the coaches that coached me in 2007 when we had a new coaching staff come in and and reinvigorate and and put louisville on the map and we made our run to omaha you know, Coach McDonald, who's still the head coach there, I think the greatest motivator in college baseball. Chris Limonis was one of our assistants, just won a national championship at Mississippi State. And then Roger Williams, who, by my estimation, and I think many others in the world of baseball, the best pitching coach in the country. Lalo Prado, who gave me an opportunity. He was my head coach there for four years. Um, a, a tremendous person, somebody who, you know, always entertained us during my time. I thank him for giving me an opportunity. Uh, Brad Bohannon, head coach over at Alabama, uh, he was a guy, it's a story people always find to be amazing. He was my head coach in 2004 in the um, in Great Lakes League, and we were in Athens, Ohio, and we stayed in an apartment, all the players and the coaches, we stayed in one apartment building on the side of a mountain. And that's how I spent my summer of 2004, and we spent tons of hours together. He, he kind of showed me at 19 years old I knew I kind of wanted to be a coach. We all want to play forever, but we know that wraps up. And he was a guy I looked at and said, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And, and I'm happy for him where he is at now. And he and I shared a couple texts last night. And I know he is uh, really proud of what we're doing now here being the head coach at Troy. Um, I want to first thank three head coaches that I, I worked for previously. Jim McGuire at Middle Tennessee State, one of the best men in the world. Jake Boss at Michigan State, who I still talk to on a frequent basis, an awesome human being, taught me so many things he probably didn't even realize, just about communication and how to run a program. And then I want to thank Mark Kingston, um, who you know I've been with the last three and a half years, took a chance to bring me into the SEC at South Carolina program with, with such history. Um, and he has just treated me and my, my family incredibly well. And, and I'm going to miss the daily interactions with him and the rest of our staff, which we had a great staff there. And then Coach Tanner, you know, and I, I call him Coach Tanner. I don't think I earned the right to call him Ray Tanner, but Coach Tanner, who won the two national championships and almost won a third there and was our athletic director. I don't think it gets too much better than having that guy to lean on and, and ask questions and, and just seek a little bit of guidance and, and little nuggets of knowledge about how to handle this game, how to handle young men, okay? And then the last one, and I, I'm saving him for last because I don't think I would be standing right here, I can tell you that much, is Jim Schmitz. Jim Schmitz is a man, if, if you all don't know, who he was a head coach at Eastern Illinois forever, had been an assistant at Ole Miss, a head coach at Cincinnati. I had just finished playing in the, in the College World Series. I was 22 years old, and Coach Mack knew what I wanted to do in life, and he said, how can I help? I said, well, I want to be a coach. You, you know that. What, what, what can we do? He said, well, I'll keep my eyes and ears open. So a couple days later, he got a call from, from we, everybody calls him Jimmy, Jimmy Schmitz. And he wanted to talk to Coach Williams a little bit about pitching. And Coach Williams was kind of busy recruiting. And Coach Mack said, you know, I, I got a senior. He, he might go into coaching. I, 
think he's real sharp, you know. He, he said he's real resourceful, which was code for he didn't throw real hard. He competed a little bit, but got us, got us a couple Ws. Uh, but he said, I'll call him. So I get a call from a 217 number. Like I said, a couple days out of playing in Omaha. And I, I get the call, hey, it's Jimmy Schmitz, head coach at Eastern Illinois. And I just, you know, I wanted to pick your brain about why you guys were so good at pitching. And I said, well, we had Roger Williams. <laughs> so that's pretty easy. He said, well, tell me about it and break it down. So we end up having a 30, 35 minute conversation and great conversation back and forth. And at the end, he says, hey, why don't you just come interview for my job? You know, I need a second assistant and pitching coach. And I'm like, oh, OK, wh when? He goes, get up here next week. Get up here on Thursday. I said, all right, I'll do it. So you know, a week later, drive up to Charleston, Illinois. And I will tell you, I was a little bit freaked out. Never been to a town that small. Didn't know where the heck it was. Had to drive through legitimate cornfields to get there. And I interview for an entire day. How are you going to make my pitchers better? What are you going to do? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I just finished playing like three days ago. I haven't really got into that. And I don't profess to have that knowledge. But we had a great day. And, and three days later, I remember riding back from Cincinnati with a group of friends. And he called me and offered me the job. Said, hey, I want you to be my pitching coach. I want you to take it and run with it. Do whatever you want to do. You just better make the pitchers better. <laughs> and he was very clear about that. Just make them better, and you can do whatever you want. And so fortunately, gave me that opportunity at 22. We won a championship in 2008. We won a championship in 2009. And I had a great experience with him. And, but I, I want to tell that story because you have to take a chance on people. You have to believe in people. And, and he believed in me at that time. And, and that's why I'm standing here today. Um, Next, I just I want to talk about what what myself and my wife we've we felt about Troy. I mean, we we've done a lot of research, a lot of research. Every conversation I had with Brent, what do you think? And I said, I'm I'm, just, I'm doing research. I'm looking up things every single time. And so, you know, we were looking and we know the history. Okay, the national championships in '86, '87, the 13 championships since 1971. We can look at the coaches who have been here, Coach Riddle, Mayotte. Coach Pierce, Coach Smart, all amazing success. The facilities, I mean, we see what's coming. It's unbelievable, and it's already a beautiful facility. I remember coming here in 2013 when I was at Middle Tennessee State, and I'll be honest, they whipped us pretty good, just so we're all clear. They whipped us pretty good and had a heck of a team, and I remember saying, man, that's a heck of a facility for down here in Alabama. I had never been to Alabama you know, in that part. And I said, man, that's a nice facility. As we can see, it, it, it's only going to be, uh, I think it's going to be one of the finest facilities, not just in the Southeast, but in the entire country. Okay. And then, you know, I look in my research, I start seeing that, you know, we've been top 10 in attendance of the last 16 years, 10 times, I'm sorry, top 50 in attendance. We'll try to get to top 10 in attendance, but 10 of the last 16 years, top 50 in attendance. So the infrastructure and support is here. Okay. I realized this coaching at some different places, some different structures in athletics. One of the things that we want as a family is we, we want that tight knit community. We want to be near the football coach. We want to get to know the golf coach, the tennis coach, all of those different people, academics, compliance, don't want to sometimes get to know compliance too much when they tell you what you can't do. But we want to get to know everybody and integrate because in the end, we're all driven people who are trying to just be successful each and every day. The last piece of the puzzle, and we really started learning this when we came down here on Tuesday, was just the community of Troy and the campus of Troy. The campus, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's upkept. The design of all things, the athletic facilities, the way they, they mesh in there, it, it just it draws your attention. I, I walked into it and, and said to myself, OK, I'm walking in with a recruit, mom and dad, sister, brother, whoever's with them. Could this place be home? I didn't flinch for a half a second. This is a place, if you get them to campus, they see our vision, they're going to say, Troy is going to be the place for me. OK? And, and like I said, the community, the people, my wife's been interacting with different people. She's been moving and shaking around town. Everyone has just been outstanding to her. And I'm sure that'll continue for the, for the time that we're here, which will hopefully be a long, long time. OK? You know, I don't want to go too much into the baseball side. That's probably a discussion for another day. But, but I will say this. 
we are going to play an incredibly exciting brand of baseball. I know I come from a pitching background and I'll discuss a couple things we'll do there, but I have a passion for the entire game of baseball. Every time someone asks what you do, I don't say pitching coach in the past. I say I'm a baseball coach. I love base running. I love the nuance of the small game. I do like guys that hit jacks, right? I like anyone, like left-handed hitters who are gonna hit it over that short porch and right. We like all that, okay? But I like the finer details of the defense. I like making sure the angles are right on cut and relays. Those things are exciting to me, okay? I know I cut my teeth in the pitching side. And what I can tell you is this, I'm not gonna lose my roots in that. We're, we're gonna coach those pitchers. We're gonna bring that system that we've utilized and adjusted everywhere else. We're gonna bring it here to Troy. Okay, so what does that mean? We're gonna have dudes that learn to strike guys out like the Dakota Meccases and Zach Curtises who led the country in strikeouts. We're gonna have staffs that absolutely stuff you and attack you and are relentless. We're going to have guys that are competitive but yet respectful to their opponents but we're gonna get after it and have fun, okay? We are going to have a blast. We had our first team meeting yesterday on Zoom, and I'm sure by this point everybody has Zoomed out, but, and I kept it to eight minutes, as I said I would. Kept the Zoom to eight minutes, but it was awesome just to see the faces of all the players, and it gets me excited to when we will have our first team meeting in person, because in the end, this thing's going to be about relationships. It's going to be about culture it's going to be about it being incredibly tight knit. Okay, that is what we are going to build this thing on. All right, now look, are we gonna recruit our butts off? Are we gonna have a staff that will not stop until we get the right players? Yes, we are. I love to recruit. I love to recruit, my wife knows that because she sometimes says, what time are you getting home? I say two, and she, when are you leaving the next day? Six, so I don't get to see you? You'll see me soon, okay? Some of those things, they can't change because we're all striving to do big things. We talked about it. In the end, you gotta dream big to do big things. We know what our, our vision is and our goals are here, and, and we're gonna say it a lot. Our dream is Omaha, okay? You have to believe that, you have to say it, you have to will it to happen, and we will do that, okay? The, the last thing is I, I, wanna, I wanna go in, I wanna thank my family, okay? I wanna thank my mom, hopefully she's watching. I was sending her the link before I came over here. So my mom, Vicki, I'm sure she's watching. My dad, Jim, who I don't know how seating works, but just know he will sit front and center behind home plate and he doesn't move and there's zero reactions for nine innings of baseball. <laughs> Stoic would be the word that comes to mind when he watches a game. And then he'll tell me all the things that we should have done after. <laughs> um, you know, my wife's family is incredibly tight knit, okay? It's one of the things when we first got together that I, I I don't mean it as if I have, I have an incredible family, but I envy the tightness and, and the connection to, to that her family had and, and exuded in how her mom and dad and sisters and everyone you know, took us in and they've been incredibly supportive. I mentioned her youngest sister is you know, watching our kids right now, which God bless her for that. Um, you know, we have two kids, Mike and Case, and they're two and five. And we thought about bringing them here and then we said there's not enough security to keep them off the stage. So we, we went ahead and left them back in, in Lexington, South Carolina for now. You all will see them plenty, okay? Um, but the last person I gotta thank, and I know I've mentioned her a lot, is my wife, Jessie. Jessie, stand up for the room. They need to see you. How good you look today. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you two things. I'll keep it short and sweet on her, and, and, and I said this to many people. Some people say their wife gets it. Hey, my wife gets it. My wife gets it. She was a former athlete. She's a winner. She's in business. She's successful. She is a rock star. She runs all things. She runs businesses. Our kids gets them to and from. When I'm gone for a long time recruiting, she handles it all. And it's seamless. It's easy. And you don't get to do things successfully without somebody there in your corner helping you and and my wife does that she does it every single day and she'll continue doing it for a long long time and so i thank her and she is the best and and she'll be a person that i hope you guys love me a lot but you'll love her way more i know that for a fact because because she's the best so um with that being said um, I appreciate once again everybody being in this room I look forward to getting to know everybody in this room and uh, listen go Trojans and think big thank you guys